Hello gamers, geeks and gays, my name is Sturx. Welcome back to the Outer Wilds. And there's not many more times I'm going to be able to say that. And isn't that exciting? I say that, but there's not much left of the base game. My guess is maybe a handful of these episodes left. And then we're going to play the DLC. Which is going to be another journey. It's going to be another good bit of fun. And oh boy, <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster this has been. There's been laughs. There's been crying. There's been plenty of crying, and a whole lot of wonder along the way. I'm not finishing the game for a while. What we're going to do is I'm going to do everything that I feel like I want to do in the base game. So today we're going to go to the Quantum Tower of Knowledge, or the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. I always get the wrong way. We're going to go there, we're going to find the secrets. We're going to hopefully find the answer to what the hell do I do on the Quantum Moon? I'm missing something. And then we're going to go. And after that, I don't I don't know. I don't know what left there is left to do in the base game. Like... That's pretty much the only things that I've got left to look at in my log. Unless I'm missing something completely. But if I'm missing something completely, fair enough. Life is like that. I'm not going to 100% the game intentionally. If it happens, it happens. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to start the DLC. But that's a whole other kettle of fish for a whole other series that we're going to do. And the idea is after I finish the DLC, then we're going to come back... And you'll get to experience the finale. My swan song. And I don't think any of you are ready for what I have planned. Because I'm benevolent and kind and would never intentionally try to make you all cry. First things first. We need to go to the Brittle Hollow. I need to find a way into the Tower of Quantum Knowledge, and I think I know the way. I've kind of re-realized in the last few episodes how important time is to the game. And how stupid, I haven't been stupid, but how forgetful I've been, because... Can you remember the first time we went to the Brittle Hollow, or the first time we explored under the Brittle Hollow? And I wanted to go to the, the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. I saw it signposted and we went across there and then I figured out that, oh my god, it is missing. And then I'm pretty sure like, we fell into the, the black hole or something. I, I think that's how it went. Something along those lines, those things happen, it's just not necessarily in that order. It falls into the black hole. And we can fall into the black hole without dying. So if that's the case... We just wait for it to slink into the abyss. We dolphin dive after it. And then its juicy little secrets will all be ours. And I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. I don't know how long that's going to take. I genuinely don't. But, you know, that's, that's okay. We'll figure it out. I'm trying to remember where about is the top of the tower because i have a plan right i've got a I've, I've got a genuinely quite intelligent plan for me right what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go park over here i'm gonna do this oh bit of a heavy landing but that's okay i'm gonna grab the suit and what i'm actually gonna do Is pop that in there. I wonder why Sturk's doing that. My idea is, right, because I don't know how long this is going to take. It could be like a minute or it could be right near the end of the, the, the loop. If I've got that attached to it or the ship attached to it, what I need to do is actually keep an eye on those numbers because if that suddenly goes to like 20 kilometers, I know it's gone through the black hole. Which is good in practice, until I completely forget that. Which I'm entirely 
probably maybe going to do. So, we've got the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. I know my name, Solonum, was told to visit the Tower of Quantum Knowledge on Middle Hollow's Equator to learn one final rule. We skipped that bit because I couldn't figure out how to get into that. So we need to do that today. And then I'm pretty sure that will let us get to this sixth location, which I, I think is the one orbiting what I'm presuming is the eye, right? It had the eyes, like, emblem on it. So I'm guessing that's got to be it. It's got to be it. Like, look. Oh, no, oh, no, ship. Stop abducting me. It's got to be. It's got to be. I suppose the only other thing we haven't really gone to see is the Hollow Lantern, but I'm guessing that the Hollow Lantern doesn't really have anything interesting there because it is all lava. I could be wrong. Could be entirely wrong. What I want to do is find my good friend Rebec. And I can't even remember how we get there. Every time I see and know my body now, I'm just going to be sad. Especially after the last episode. I realised partway through the last episode, and I don't think I ever actually said it out loud. There was that body in the last episode, and I got, you know, I obviously seem to get quite emotional about that. In my head, that body has to belong to idea right Pi we know and I, I will admit I kind of realised the Pi bit afterwards but Pi was on the interloper Pi was on the interloper so that it couldn't be Pi and that makes me really sad because Pi this puts more context into it Pi went to the interloper and Pi stayed behind to try save the Nomai. And in my eyes, that's because she thought she had failed them with the Sun Station. An idea, he he was there, just sat waiting at the station, waiting, hoping thinking, wishing he could have done something different. He definitely feels like he's responsible for the the station not working. He, he feels like he didn't try hard enough. He didn't believe in it enough. And it broke Pi down the middle. And now he feels guilty about it. And there was a little bit that happened and it was a happy little accident. I put the tablet back. And I can't really explain it, it just felt right. It just felt right. I have just noticed... Rebake's got like a transmitter on here, or like a weird ass capo. For their banjo. <laughs> I love that. Hi Rebake. Oh, you launched, that's great. Good job you. Wow, I guess that means I've been out here a while, huh? Well, um, this is Bristol Hollow, but you probably knew that. Let's let's see if I can ask Rebecca a few things. See if there's anything new I can tell them. I found the vessel. You did! That that, that that's incredible! Congratulations! That means they really were from far outside the solar system. <laughs> yes, I knew it! That creates so many questions. If they didn't come from our solar system, where did they come from? Are they from our galaxy or somewhere even farther? What were their lives like before they came here and why did they come here? Hey, I, I might not be much of an astronaut, but I'm really glad I came out here to see the Nomai's artifacts for myself. And thanks for telling me about the vessel, I mean. Of course, Rupek, of course. What was, what was that? Brrr. What was what was a brr? There was a brr. What was a brr? What's a brr? Surface integrity? Oh hell no! 
Oh, is that where the ship is? Is that where the ship is, or is that where I am? Oh. I'm n I don't think I've ever noticed that pop up before, but I am incredibly blind a lot of the time. Okay. Uh, I saw the old settlement. I can't remember if I told them about that. Isn't it amazing? Hard to believe the settlement's still standing, but there it is. It really makes you appreciate living somewhere like Timberhearth, you know? Somewhere that isn't constantly bombarded with meteors and rocks and stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's all that we've said. Right, is this our surface integrity? Are we about to go hurtling? Because I didn't think this one ever disappeared. I, I've never noticed Rebec fall through the black hole before, but this could be a first. It could be. Oh. Come on. Fall, damn you. Please. Kindly. I could listen to Rebecca all day. I freaking love this little fella's banjo. And I just love their carrot sign. They are so friend shaped. They are so incredibly friend shaped, and I love that. Oh, it's looking a little bit gnarly. I right. I'm trying to think. So it's now that we're coming to the end of the series or the end of the base game. I'm trying to think which of these places is my favourite, which of these places means the most to me. And honestly, I don't think I'd be able to pick one anymore. They all are held weight at certain points in the series. You know, there was times where Brittle Hollow just hit different. There were so many Nomai related things here, and I still think it still does hold quite a lot of weight. The old settlement is the first place I cried in the game. The Hanging City is the first place I just felt this immense sense of awe and wonder. I even remember the first time we went into orbit on Timber Half. And I was instantly blown away. And it does make me sad that the journey is coming to an end, but also not happy. But I do feel like there's a level of contentment about it all. And I've got ages before I finish the game. Like, this is just the base game that we're doing. Got the whole DLC to do, and I have no idea what to expect. But that gives me time to prepare. And time to get ready for that ending. Gives you time to prepare for the ending. Because trust me, you're probably going to need it. Right, this has got to go sometime soon. Right? I'm going, I'm going back to the tower. This has got to be sometime soon, if at all. And if I can cut a bit of time out by being on board when it finally decides to, you know, to go. Then that would be pretty cool. I'm guessing the structural integrity is because I've got my scout launched. That's the only thing that I can think of that would be different in all of this. You know, I can't see there being anything different about it. God, that bridge is thoroughly dismantled on this one. And that sun's looking incredibly red. Surely there's time. Surely there's time. Please, Hollow Lantern. Maybe I have to do a sacrifice. Maybe we'll sacrifice a small goat. Maybe not a goat. 
No, my are a bit goatish. Ah, it is this one. Come on, Lantern. One more. You can do it. Hit me with your best shot. Look at it. Lost for words. Maybe we'll go back up. Let's go back up to the ship, just on the off chance, because I feel like, mayhaps, a little bit of oxygen would go a long way, because we are just kind of standing out here, and I am a professional Outer Wilds player now. I should be able to keep an eye on my oxygen levels. There we go, three minutes of oxygen remaining. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, what? Oh, I got so close to the trees. Come on. This has got to be it. Maybe if I jump real hard. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Hollow. Just give in. I know what it's like. I know you don't want to give in. I know you don't want to let go. Just do it. We're beyond fighting it now. We don't need to fight anymore. Please. I hope I'm right. I hope I'm right. I could be wrong. could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Well, prove me right. Otherwise, if this is random, that means I'm going to have to play this a whole bunch of times to make sure I get round here. I will do it. You do. You don't. Don't you dare underestimate my indomitable spirit. I have all day. I have all day. The planet will give in before I do. My god, there's not much left of it now. Not much left of anything anymore. I'm just worried that if this takes too long, I'm not going to have very long at all to explore that. Can I fit the ship through here? I don't. The ship's not going to fit through there. <clears throat> So if the ship's not going to fall through there, then this has... Yes! Come on, please. I am a genius! Wait, where is it? Wait. Come on. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Unidentified signal nearby. There's something... There's definitely something quantum in here. How long has this been evading me? You, my friend, are about to be stirxed. So we're missing a tablet somewhere. Let's grab the scroll, so I'm going to need that. 
Can maybe take that down? There's a tablet missing. Bells. If you're here to make your first pilgrimage to the quantum moon, you're almost prepared to set out on this deeply significant journey. Before you do, pause. Remember your history. We make this journey not only for ourselves, but also to honor the members of our clan who came before us. After the crash that brought them to this star system, became stranded on Brittle Hollow and Ember Twin, with no communication between these two groups of survivors. These Nomai looked upwards from two different planets and saw the same wandering moon visiting their skies. It was this moon, the Quantum Moon, that kept their curiosity alive during this long period of hardship. After the two divided groups were able to reunite, it became our clan's united goal to find and visit the Quantum Moon. This took time, and many Nomai who dreamed of seeing the Quantum Moon died before we discovered how to make the journey. When you reach the Quantum Moon, recall these Nomai carry their curiosity onward with you. I will. I will. Welcome, Solanum. Your arrival here means you've completed your preparations on Giant's Deep and you are ready to depart for the Quantum Moon. On your pilgrimage, the Quantum Moon will carry you just as it carried me and many in our clan before me to the Moon's sixth most secret location. You'll be aided in your pilgrimage by the shrine our clan built on the quantum moon, but remember this final rule to explore the sixth location. The shrine must be on the moon's north pole. Be curious on your journey. Well, that was a bit vague. How can I get it to be there? How? I... do I have any... I didn't think I had any control over it. And I'm missing a thing. The North Pole. So we have to get to the North Pole. But we can do it. I've done worse. We're gonna do it. I promise we're gonna do it. We're gonna find the sixth location. <sighs> and then we'll be done. Then we'll be done.
You didn't think I was going to leave it there, did you? Really? This is the 30th episode. I'm not going to leave it there. We are doing this. We are doing the last bits of the base game. And I thought I'd be a, like, a little bit more teary-eyed about the idea. You know, I, I thought mayhaps I'd be a little bit more upset. Because it has been such a journey. It's been such a long journey with you guys. I never expected the sheer success that I've found doing this. But I can't thank you guys enough. What we need to do... Okay, we're going straight into this. I need to land on this thing once and for all. And somehow find a way to get that shrine. Mm. Somehow get the shrine up there. Hi, Solanum. It's been a while, but guess who's back, baby? I found. I found it. I know what I'm meant to do. Okay, I need to get the tower to the north. I don't know how I'm going to do that because we're always at the south. You sit there. We're going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for you. Somehow. Can I even get to the north? Because So, obviously that thing is going to keep moving around. So if I spin around enough times, eventually it's going to be up the north. The problem I'm having is I don't believe I can get up north. I can't get... How am I meant to get north? It's all rocky. It's all rocky. We move the rock. We move the rocks. What if... So each of these moons is slightly different, right? So my guess is... We need more space. So we'll try these one at a time. Right? Oh boy. Is this one going to be any better? This is looking a little bit better. This is looking a little bit better. Ah, I don't think that quite counts. That's not the North Pole. Please, come on. I mean, it's worth a, sh worth a shot. I wouldn't say this is the North Pole. Right? I wouldn't class this as the North Pole, but we'll give it a go. We'll, we'll trust the... We'll trust it. That's Giant's Deep. Timber Half, too rocky. Yeah, so that didn't count. We weren't quite... We weren't quite there. Okay, so where else? Maybe try the twins. Let's try one of the twins. I don't know if this is also going to be rocky. This looks better. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on, baby. We're going. We're doing it. 
Was it really this simple all along? like quantum cheese. Yes! <laughs> oh, get out of my eyes. I need to be able to see. I know who you are. Identify? Oh, oh! Okay. Um. You. Oh, this is clever. I am Solanum, and no my my clan arrived in this star system before my birth, and now we call it home. Hang on, explain. Explain you. I'm on my first pilgrimage to the quantum moon. All know my and my clan make this journey when we come of age. Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us, as it carries us nearer to the eye than any other place we know. I journeyed here to be close to the eye. While the eye is obscured from our sight, we can see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye in the sky above us. Okay, okay, so I've got that. Um, you, I, um, identify. I mean, I probably know most of these. We are orbiting the eye of the universe now, although we cannot see it, only the quantum moon's reflection of it. The eye is older than the universe itself, and my clan believes it dwells in an extremely distant orbit around this star system. There is fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on a very small scale. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. The quantum moon probably exists macroscopic quantum behavior, exhibits macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. The shards that broke off from the quantum moon have a similar effect, as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in this star system. Conscious observation forces a quantum object to collapse to a single possibility. What would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my clan's greatest question. Okay, 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 right. Me! Identify me. Identify. What am I? Use your big know my brain. 
I've never met any of your kind before. It's an honor to speak with you. I particularly admire your four eyes. I particularly admire your three eyes, Solano. There are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language. You have my gratitude for understanding mine. So that's how they write. It's a scribe tool. I imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm unsure how you arrived here, however, perhaps you came from another star system as my clan originally did? Not quite, my dear. We were here all along. Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? The shards look the same as a quantum moon surface does now whilst at the eye. From this we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state is as we see it now and that the eye is the primary location. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it's likely that any characteristics the moon exhibits are also exhibited by the eye itself. The quantum moon and its shards, for instance, are quantum, thus the eye is likely also quantum. In fact, this moon is probably quantum because its proximity to the eye made it quantum. The same way the areas surrounding quantum shards that landed on the other planets eventually became quantum too. And that would explain how you're alive. This is a quantum moon, where we both are standing. Despite also orbiting other celestial bodies, the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. So I can't, can I put both? I can combine them. Is this your first time to the quantum moon? It's my first time here. If you come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. I I do too, but I, I don't know if there's any... <laughs> I don't think there's anything else I want to look at. I, I... Oh, this... Suppose you could reach the eye of the universe. Would you try to enter it? What do you imagine the effects of a conscious observer might be? Yeah, I, I've, I've thought about that. We do not have much connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. <laughs> I hope you won't mind if I think of you as a friend. I think I'd be okay with that. I think I would be okay with that. Like many of my clan before me, I journeyed here to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is the closest any of us have come to seeing the eye itself. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. Many in my clan believe the eye called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe the eye was malevolent to have lured my clan to the star system only to then completely vanish from them so completely. But I don't fear the eye anymore. In fact, it became my fondest hope to see the eye itself. Someday. But I fear this may be beyond my reach. You may think I'm strange. Perhaps my journey's reached its end. Imagine you've noticed quantum moon changes its appearance depending on which location it is currently orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different when orbiting Giants Deep than it does when orbiting the Hourglass Twins. Because the quantum moon clearly changes it in its different forms, the eye being this moon's primary location must be similarly malleable. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. That said, despite its malleable nature, the quantum moon becomes locked to one specific version of itself when it is consciously observed. What would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye? Oh, Salanum. 
Is there anything else here? Is I I I I don't want I don't want to leave. But at the same time, I can't just presume. No, no, 